everyone, my name is Prue or Prue LaRue and today we are doing from the above shorts. I've set up my overhead viewing and we're going to do my palette collection. All the palettes are underneath this camera right now. I've been really nervous to film this video because it intimidates me to show you how much eyeshadow I actually own. But I know people have been wanting to see this so excited to give you guys what you want. Let me know what your favourite palettes are from this collection. I may declutter some, I haven't decided yet. Let's take you through. Shall we just go from the top? So here we have the Chi Chi Natural palette. Have I even opened this? Yes I have. Um, it's just like a lot of natural shadows. I thought this was going to be a fun eyeshadow to test out and where to work and see how the Chi Chi formula holds up. Uh, as you can see I haven't touched it. This is the other reason. I haven't wanted to show anyone this this thing. This my collection because I feel like I haven't used enough and then I also find reasons to buy makeup all the time. Here I've got the Smashbox. I think it's the All Mattes palette. The Matte Eye palette. I bought this when I was going into Mecca uh, I'm from Australia if you're wondering because I wanted a eyeshadow that complemented a lot of other eyeshadows because I was buying a lot of sparkly ones at the time. I don't particularly like this one. I have used it a bit and I've just never been super impressed with it. It does look cool though so I do keep it for that outer part but it's not really a good reason. I think maybe I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna start a maybe declutter and uh, this palette is top of that list. Because I wouldn't actually mind, it's November now, maybe checking some stuff up on Facebook and seeing if I can sell it off. Here we have the Rimmel, or the Revlon Player eyeshadow. I bought this because of this amazing green here. I, I haven't had a chance to really play with it yet, but it doesn't look too bad. So this is in my, I'm going to make another list of eyeshadow palettes I have to use soon to justify their existence. This one is going in that list. From Rimmel, I have the, is it the Jewel Rocks edition. It was not long ago, because of the cool colors, I actually haven't used it. I have swatched this shade, but none of the other ones. It just, I don't know. It is one that I was excited to buy at the time, and I feel like I really do need to actually use it. So I'm gonna put that on my to use soon pile. All right, sorry, so I've just brought you up a bit higher because I didn't have enough like space to sort of show you stuff. Hopefully this is better. This is my first time filming like this. But here I've also got another Rimmel London eyeshadow palette and this is the Rainbow Edition. I've also because it's got quite a pretty color story and I am keen to play with it. I just haven't, I don't know. I buy so many amazing eyeshadows, it's hard to justify. That's just that shade there. Look at that green, that's really pretty that on my to play with soon list. <laughs> it's the big reason I've like been nervous to film this video. Because I feel like it's so easy. I've got the Chi Chi OMFG 2 palette. I'm actually super excited for their upcoming release of the little mini palettes. I think that'll be quite fun. I've used this palette like once or twice and it's quite nice. It's gonna stay in my collection but I really do need to actually like film small looks with it and get like some decent opinions on them. I do actually store my palette separately so that the drugstore and high end are different. So the top is a lot of drugstore and then it goes high end. And sorry if you hear that noise, it's my cat playing. So I've got the Maybelline Total Temptation palette. I tend to buy a lot of drugstore when it's on special. Marceline. And this palette was just like one I thought could be really good for work and then I've never used it. So let's put it on the to use pile. And I feel like I need to set a challenge for myself coming up to actually use these palettes. At least do a first impression and then film with them. This is the Morphe, is it Gem? No. Artistry palette. I bought this, I filmed looks with it, I hated it. I've kept it in memoriam of that. I don't know, I'd be curious to play with it again and see if I am like better at using these shadows now than I was when I filmed that video. I'm not sure. Scan it to the swatches. I mean, it's a bit cheap, isn't it? I feel like I should just get rid of it. Yeah. 
So Morphe R Street, I'm going to put this in my maybe declutter pile. I just have problems with decluttering and I can't bring myself to commit to it. This is the Morphe, what's all they named? Oh, the 15H Happy Hour palette. Some of my palettes I do actually list when I bought them since April this year. I've not really used it, mostly because it's neutrals. And I bought this and just spending a bit more time with the Morphe formula and seeing if they did browns a lot better. So I think I will keep it and I'll try and film with it upcoming. Because look, that swatched really nicely there. This is like an awkward setup for me because like my hands are back here. From Astralis, I've got the Kaleidoscope palette. I've used this once or twice, but I don't feel like I have like a strong opinion on it. I think I will keep it just to get like more of an idea of if I like it. Look, I keep swatching all the greens, but they're so pretty. That swatch is going. But these are really soft. Whoops, I swatched it. But yeah, they're really soft. I feel like I could do a bit more with this one, but it's not kind of thing because I feel like I, like I like it okay. When we went overseas earlier this year, I picked up exotic fruits from Catrice. This is a beautiful looking sort of palette that's like a good everyday kind of look. Um, and I have been excited to play with it, I just haven't got around to doing it. So this is Honeyberry. It feels a bit hard pressed and I'm not sure how I would go using it, but I need to film with it. I've been meaning to for so long. Oh, Marceline, you found the bubble. This is from another brand that I actually can't read the thing. Um, I'm not sure how to say that word. But I believe I bought it in Berlin. You can see it's got the label there from when I bought it. It has like a really cute little palette. I know I've swatched turtle before, but that is a beautiful shade there. I'm just going to add that in the back of my hand. But look at that beautiful duochrome. I feel like I really need to play with this ASAP. From Astralis, I have the Astralis Mesmerize palette. I did a look with this the other day, and I actually thought a lot of it was shimmers. I'm not sure if you can tell why, but upon using it, there are actually some quite nice shades in here. It's a very pink, purple eyeshadow palette. These three are glitters, so I'm never going to use them, I know that. But, after playing with it once, I'm actually curious to play with it a little bit more and see how it goes. From NYX, I have the Ultimate Eyeshadow Palette. Now, if you've watched my Swamp Queen video, I did use this shade at the end. I actually love that shade down there. And I'm going to keep this because it's like a cute, compact collection of NYX eyeshadows that I actually quite like. I wouldn't mind trying more of the Ultimate in those small range because I do like that but per se I like the NYX Ultimate Rainbow Palette I'm gonna keep it just because I feel like I'm gonna keep buying it for no reason but I actually don't like this palette at all uh, but you can work with it it's just it's just not very good from Flower Beauty I have the what is it? Shimmer and Shade eyeshadow palette this has so much fallout is not very good uh, the brush that it came with is actually quite good, but as a eyeshadow formula, I'm not the biggest fan. So I think, I think maybe I want to like try and at least do play with it one more time before I part ways with it. So I'm going to put it in the maybe declutter pile. From Kiko, this is also from when we went overseas, and this is when I was in Amsterdam. I bought this, and it's a oh here, yeah. it's like a full face palette. It has blush, bronzer. Sort of everything. So this could be like a fun one to sort of do a look with and try and force it out of there. Even the mirror has instructions on like what to do. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure why I haven't played with it, but it looks pretty fun, doesn't it? I've got the Wet n Wild Rosé. I don't think I'll ever get rid of this one. I am... Wet n Wild's quite hard to get in Australia and I bought this in London. I've not really dipped into it at all. So I need to play with this a little bit and I'm intrigued to see if it is any good. I know a lot of people rave about it. I am just genuinely surprised at how crappy Wet n Wild packaging is in person because on camera you just can't feel how cheap it feels. I mean most of the drugstore does feel a bit cheap to be honest. But that's why it's cheaper and sometimes if being cheaper doesn't like can still be a pretty good eyeshadow. From Barry M, I have Shipwrecked. 
I bought this on sale recently and I still haven't cracked it open. It's still actually got the plastic on it. I've just unwrapped it so we can have a look at it. But I actually, I'm kind of excited to play with this and do a look and see what I think. Like, look at this beautiful woo, blue here. Like, that is stunning. So I think this could be a really fun palette to do like pre looks with and just see how the Barium formula stacks up. And it is very similar packaging to the Wet n Wild, but being a bigger palette, it's got like a little bit of weight to it. This is also from London. I got the Revolution Surf, Surf X palette. I did use this a few times when I was, and I've been impressed with it so far. I do really like it, and I think I'm just definitely going to keep it. I've also got the Barry M. Sanchron palette. I bought this because I was thinking of, it's always nice to have a few more browns in your collection, but I definitely haven't used this enough. So I'm going to add this to my collection of palettes to use soon. From BH Cosmetics, I have the Shanoxo Remix palette. I was thinking of buying her latest palette. But I just don't feel like it's different enough from this palette. I mean, it's got some pretty shades in it, but I've not used this palette enough to justify buying her new one. So I think I'm happy to play with this and see how it goes. And then decide from that. But these are really soft, pigmented, and I did have her original palette. Look at that. That's Beach Babe back there. All right, just watch. And sorry, I do actually like a mixture of neutrals and colours. So I think I'm keen to play with this a little bit more, get my thoughts around it. And I'm probably going to watch a few more reviews on the Heap of Sweets palette that she just came out with, with her own brand. And see if I think it's worth picking that one up. Because Heap of Sweets is $54. I don't know. This palette sort of has the colours that I love from Shanoxo. And still sort of supports Shanoxo in a way. I did have a one that came with the lips in it, but the lips melted and went all gross. So I gave them away. That's a lot of the top drugstore sort of done. And then we're moving into my favorite, some of my favorite shadows. And I've actually pulled out all of my singles here. So I've got the Davina Angelica Nyquist bundle here. I have done, did I do a couple looks? I've definitely played with it at least once. It looks like I've played with a lot more just because they're so high in pressed shadows. I'm pretty sure I still need to do like a three looks with this palette because look, it is just stunning. And it's such a beautiful collection of colours that Angelica chose. And yeah, I like this look at that holographic awesomeness. So this is definitely in my to play with list. From Glamour Natrix, I have the Sandra Rose palette. This is a beautiful palette. I think it's no longer going to be stocked. But it is just stunning. I've played with it quite a lot. And I've been doing, working on my eyeshadow primer video where I compare 15 eyeshadow primers. It is coming. <laughs> I promise you. Um, but for that one, I use the Glamour Natrix eyeshadows. These are hand pressed and they are just stunning. It's such a beautiful color story. And Annette from Annette's Makeup Corner helped curate the colors in it. And she did a stunning job. If you ever get, your ch like, get the chance to get your hands on this palette, it's such a beautiful addition to your collection. From Colourpop, I have a whole heap of singles. I tend to try and get use out of these by doing roulette single, is it roulette? Uh, singles roulette with my eyeshadows. And I still haven't feel fully curated these shades down to exactly what I want, but they're getting there. This is one of Glaminatrix single palettes. It's empty and it has a lot of my Glaminatrix single shadows in there. These are just a beautiful formula. What shall I swatch? I really love. But look at that shimmer. It's spearmint. So this one here is spearmint, but just all of her shimmers are amazing to work with. And the mattes are beautiful too. They are hand pressed, so they are like a bit soft at times. You can see a lot of kick up, but just a beautiful array of shadows. One day I will fill this up. From Davina I have like an odd assortment of shades that I picked out a long time ago in one of her palettes. So per se this is from the duochrome collection and this is Menalus which is just a beautiful duochrome dream. 
I really liked the Davina shadows I've worked with and they are quite similar to most other hand pressed shadows that I've used. Let's knock out the rest of the singles. So actually a large portion of my collection is Sydney Grace. These are all Sydney Grace shadows. Let's just double check. Yeah. Um, in inglot containers because I really love being able to slide them like this. I'm just going to show you and not go through them too much. But I definitely need to play with them a lot more. And as we get further down, you'll see an odd arrangement of shadows. This one is a Cleonde single. Kiko. This is some excess. Oh, the Sydney Grace in this corner. This is NYX singles over here. And these are Australis singles at the moment. But I believe Australis has stopped making singles. So that's a bit disappointing. But in my last Davina order, I accidentally ordered this highlighter. So I haven't figured out what to do with it yet. Um, it needs a new home though. Where I'll actually use it. Because like coming up the next one is an odd arrangement. In the Sydney Grace Mystery Bag, I got blush, highlighter, and blush. These are some Elon Masca singles that I depotted. Some Lancome palette I've got that I depotted and I also depotted the Benefit blush and bronzers into this one. I need to find a way to like, I've always, I need a new home for these Sydney Grace ones and then to add some more square things to this palette is the ultimate dream. From Cleone, Cleon, oh, sorry I'm the worst at saying it, I don't even think I'll ever get. But I have the Arkeo palette. I remember when I first got into makeup and watching all the beauty bloggers that I look up to and admire had this palette and I'm just so excited to have it. I did do three looks, one palette, doing the looks that Angelica Nyquist created for this palette. But I would be intrigued to dip into it and sort of see where my mind takes myself with this palette. I believe it's either just had one last restock or it's going to be restocked one more time. This isn't... It's like... I don't know. But it is spray painted and um, you can see sort of like the... It's not sealed. It doesn't get dirty very easily. I bought this in January this year. But you can pop them out of the back if you want. I've also sort of dreamt of just doing a spray overlay to seal in the spray paint that they did. Because I do love the artwork. I just wish it was a bit more sealed. And it is a beautiful collection of shadows. So I recently discovered you can get Tribe Beauty in Australia. You just have to pay a bit for shipping. So I do have the Ruby May hashtag brights that came recently. It looks like a fun palette to play around with. And I feel like I should really do something with it soon. Sooner rather than later. So in the to be played with path. And on that note, I also did just get recently the Artisan palette that came. This highlighter was smashed, unfortunately, when it arrived. And I've repressed it, but the formula is different. I'm confident. I just played with this today and I, I love it. The Sui Beauty formula is really nice and I've got the saffron palette here which is why I didn't select it this time but the saffron is very much one note whereas I think there's a little bit more dimension happening in the artisan palette to use so I thought with the selection it made sense to get artisan over saffron and also I, I already own saffron so after this I'm also going to try and organize all my palettes by brand and then by size and then we can do a makeup corner to a let me know if that's something you'd be interested to see. But I can also just as easily sit there and not film it and just organize my makeup because it makes me happy. Ah. From Menagerie, I have the Feral palette. I've used this once and I really need to play with it again. I was so impressed with it when I did. It's a very heavy weighted palette and it is beautiful. I definitely need to film some more looks with this soon and I really, it's just such a beautiful colour story. I'm obsessed. I do also have the whale, the violet ink palette. When I got it, it came a bit smashed, so I repressed it. And <laughs> uh, she ended up refunding me for the palette, and I'm buying the palette that's coming. I've bought it again, so I'm excited to get that. And then I'm not sure what I'll do with this. Because 
I just find sometimes when you're repressing something, when, when you're repressing, it really changes the formula. And it came with a dent in the back of this. So the palette is never going to be like this eyeshadow here. It doesn't sit uniformly. Let's see if I can show you. But I don't know if you can see that little lump there. So that just personally, I'm a bit OCD on my makeup. Uh, it would just annoy me a lot. So I'm holding on to it and I'll get the new one soon, hopefully with the Pear palette and then finally have a bit of a play with this formula because since repressing it, I haven't touched it. I just sort of sat on it. Oh, what is in this one? Oh, here are my Enchanted Lustre shades that I have. I know this one, but off the top of my head, there's Peach Lustre. Sorry, that finger was a little bit dirty. Here we go. I've just cleaned my finger off. So this is... Can I even do a good job? Peach Lustre. I'm not... Uh, I know a lot of people, I see a lot of love for this brand online, but having bought now from a lot of indies, so this is my swatch of peach, no, but here and here, but that's discontinued. I find these extremely loose, like so loose. And the oil that she's used is a smelly oil. Like it's very fragrant. Of my eyeshadows, these are the eyeshadows that smell the most, hence why they're sort of partitioned off in their own container. I've made some people smell them and they don't notice it as much as I do and it's just something that seems to bother me. I do have like another friend or two who've been like, oh yeah, that does actually have a bit of a smell. The packaging they came in for the price, it just I just couldn't justify it. So I don't know if I'll buy from that brand again. I will keep them and decide. But I wouldn't mind just playing with them a little bit more. And going from there but I don't think I would ever really recommend them to anyone I am sorry for that from lethal cosmetics this is a brand that I absolutely love they do some beautiful eyeshadows I actually have two custom palettes I think you guys have only seen one and I actually have rearranged these uh, from their original creation I did do a three looks one palette with the original 12 shades that I had and I've added another 12 shadows since then and I've combined them and made them into what they are now. I'm keen to sit down and play with them a bit more but I'm not sure how to approach that. The Lethal Cosmetics formula is bomb. Their packaging is stunning and I love this. I think I probably won't buy any more shadows from them though until they release another outer palette because it would feel like I needed just for my brain. I would want another black one and another white one. Or I don't know if I would get, yeah, I would just rather them all be different colors. Because if I had two black, one white, I don't know, they just feel lonely. I'm like, they need more. But I would happily have the whole Lethal Cosmetics range because I've been so impressed with these shadows that I've used and the performance of them. From Menagerie, this is their empty palette that they stock. And here are my singles. The lovely Annette from Annette's Makeup Corner and DBS Ant Eyes. I think that's right, Darcy. <laughs> Her Instagram. I'll have a link down below. But they both helped me select out the singles from here to buy. Annette helped with this selection and Darcy helped with this selection here. I still haven't played with them enough, but I'm excited to. And it does make me, you know, that's one of the things I love about the makeup community. How we are all brought together by our love of colours. And one day I will fill it up. I'm just not sure when but this is a super cute single palette i'm obsessed i'm gonna add that to my pile of looks parts to play with which is getting quite big really oh and i've forgotten to count my palettes oh no <sighs> ah i still also have some more singles actually this one is empty this is just a gold ingot one and i use this in my singles roulette looks and then when i put the singles in there to have a look anything in here at the moment ah. and then from Inklot I actually do have these used to have Sydney Grace in there hence why they're labeled this so but this just has an enchanted lustre rainbow highlighter and then we've got Inklot shadows galore which I just haven't done enough with <sighs> 
Um, I love the colors I've got selected and I spent a long time choosing them out. I can just show you them. And I could create such beautiful looks with these. I really need to. So I'm going to add these to my do looks with pile, which is getting quite overwhelmingly large. Let's have a look at some of my Colourpop palettes. So I've got the Femrosa palette. I haven't really played with this one much, but I did used to own it. Then I gave it to my sister and then I bought it again for myself because I missed it. I just really love the cool tone, warm, I don't know, I love this cool tone red theme of this palette. It's very nice. The Element of Surprise palette. One time Colourpop emailed me and told me that for Aries, which is my astrological sign, the Element of Surprise palette was the palette for me, so I bought it. I haven't used it too much, I don't have too much of an opinion. The Colourpop Kathleen Lights Zodiac palette, I haven't used it much, I don't have much of an opinion. I just keep buying these. The Kathleen Lights Dream Street palette, I've used it a bit, I really loved it, it was very nice. And it's just a beautiful collection of shades together. And I've never really been that disappointed with Colourpop. They always sort of come through. I've got the Cute AF or the Yes Please palette, which I remember getting up at 3am for when it first got released. Do I even have the time? No. And buying multiples of this and giving this to all my friends because it was just like revolutionary at the time. So... I don't mind the formula in here. I don't tend to reach for this part very often as, as, if at all, but I will keep it for the memories of the first palette I ever woke up for at 3 a.m. I've got the Perception palette from Colourpop, the Shayla Colourpop collection. Um, I'm not sure why I bought this and I've never really used it. I need to. All right, and then we're moving more into like, well, there's gonna be Colourpop mixed in here but there's definitely a lot more higher end coming through. I recently bought the Colourpop Make Up Your Mind palette. I know Angela Nyquist always talks about this palette on her channel. So I decided I must have it. And then I didn't use it. I've got the It's My Pleasure palette. I've played with it from it. It's quite nice. I really, I might, like Colourpop just doesn't disappoint at all. I find that it's very hard to not have a fun time with Colourpop. And I know I've got, here it is. I was looking for this, the Lilac You A Lot palette. I bought this recently because I had an idea. That's it. Look, I still haven't even really used it or opened it. Please tell me if you've got any good ideas for this, but you know when you ask people to be your bridesmaid in a wedding, I thought it would be cool to find a way to make this palette like something to do with that. I was hoping that the top of it could actually come off, but it's like imprinted in. Like I thought for some reason that there were stickers, but they're not. So I don't know. But I mean, I could always put something on the mirror maybe, like where they open it and then it's in there. I'm not sure. But that's been one of my thoughts to do for like that gift of like asking someone to be a bridesmaid. But I'm not sure on the execution. So if you're more creative than me, please let me know. Here I've next got my Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes. I've got the OG Subculture and I really like it. It's been a nice format. It's been really good. These eyeshadows actually did go a bit crazy not long ago. They just sort of started getting really soft and like they were lifting. So I went through and repressed all of my Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes and sprayed them down with alcohol and they look a lot better now. But I haven't used them since I've done that to that. The Norvina, a beautiful soft purple theme and the uh, Anastasia Olivia Edwards, Alyssa Edwards palette. I'm a bit of a drag queen stan sometimes. So this palette was sort of like a must add to my collection. And I don't mind it. From Natasha Denona, uh, from my Beautylish Lucky Bag a while ago, I'm, I got this and it's what, the Holiday Joya palette. I've never really used it much or been like that drawn to it. I don't know. My collection does have a lot of neutrals in it, but I don't, I don't know. If I'm sitting down doing my makeup, I tend to pull out like a really simple palette. Like if I'm gonna do work makeup, I always grab a 
gravitate to the stiller eyes of the window soul palette ah she's just a beautiful basic real basic brown looks and you just can't mess this palette up so i just i have my fate my favorites when it comes to the neutrals don't pull it out the joyette hand lines i did a three looks one palette with this and i just really did not enjoy the formula is creams here so this one is gonna go on my like maybe get rid of but i do love that vitamin c shape i know i really struggle with getting rid of eyeshadow let me know if you are similar so from glam light i remember watching a lot um the the hamburger palette and people really loved that so they came out with the pizza slices i thought it would be a fun get so I've got veggie lovers and meat lovers. I don't really like the meat lovers palette. Veggie lovers is quite nice. I've done some videos on them. I think I'll keep them for the novelty, but I likely at some point will get rid of meat lovers and keep veggie lovers. From Colored Rain and the Queen of Hearts palette. I just don't own the Rust show palette. So the Coloured Rain Queen of Hearts Parts is one of my first eyeshadow indie brand pur purchases that I ever made. I remember when I was 50% off the first time. Coloured Rain has some really good specials. I've used it. I play with it. It's very pigmented. It's very lovely. I've never had Modern Renaissance, which is what this is meant to be a dupe of. So I don't know how it stacks up really, but it's a nice palette to have. I have kept all of their cardboard because it's so cute and it has the like effect whereas the actual palettes don't have the effect if you see the shiny it's not as shiny so I've got lovelies smoke show and I got and very cute pretty sure I got smoke show in my Colourpop mystery bag not my coloured rain mystery bag and I got a hairy lipstick which is in the video if you haven't seen that um and I gave so I decided to order this one lovelies which look like a cute lovely like a really lovely color story to play with and I've had very cute for a while and this is the first part that ever truly stumped me purple berry is a peculiar shade Let's see if I can if you see it there but it just like it looks like that and then when you blend it out it's different um i remember taking this in to see a makeup artist to get her help with it and it helped a little bit but not much to be honest so i've kept it but it has remained a somewhat intimidating palette for me you've probably spied some controversial brands so maybe we should try and get them moved out predominantly it's just kat von D. So, with the pastel dot. If you watch my channel for any amount of time, you know I love this palette. I just do. I've got the 10 year anniversary palette. I bought this just before we found out about her anti vaccine states. And, um, I don't know. I've kept it. I've also got, I used to own all four of these and I've slowly gotten them out of my collection, but this is Sage is the, the green collection and these are little minis they're on sale and i really wanted them underneath here hiding over here i've got serpentina this is probably one of my first high-end purchases and for me Kat Von D really was one of those brands that i was buying initially um it was one of the only colorful brands that existed in australia and they regularly went on 50 percent off so i would regularly buy them that's changed and obviously I've bought a lot of other things since then but they still do hold a special place in my heart I'm not supporting the brand but hey maybe she'll change her mind and vaccinate her child we have the Christmas collection from well like the Aurora Lights palette from last year that Bare Minerals released I didn't know that's palette I wish I did I do but I don't but I'm going to keep it. I feel like it needs... Well, I'm going to put this in the maybe declutter pile. I've gotten rid of a few of the palettes from this range now. I remember buying, I think I bought two or three of them. 
And I've just kept the cool one. And it should, what is it? Palette Dean. <sighs> ah, Dark Magic is the palette I kept. I did have the purpley one, but I didn't really like it, so I gave it away. But I love this shade for that poison here. This one is beautiful, and I've kept it too. From KKW, I have the KKW Mario palette. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I feel like I really need to play with this a lot more to get a good rounded opinion. I do love her packaging, and I love the contour stick. I'm keen to try the KKW brand a bit more because it's like a really fun aesthetic. And they are bringing out another Mario palette soon. So it's kind of on my radar. From Too Faced, I have the Peach, Sweet Peach palette. This is one of my first high-end purchases that I made in store at Mecca. I remember asking the girl for like a palette in store. That was really good to, that would be really good for a beginner to get her head around makeup. And she re recommended this palette. I've never had much luck with it. It got hard, it got hard pan quite quickly and it's just peachy shade and um, I scraped off that layer. I think it's like a bit better now. So I think I need to play with it, but I think I might, I might get rid of this. I'm going to put this in the maybe declutter pile. From Mark Jacobs, I have, which one? The Edge of Tour palette, which is this beautiful little green and gold brown number it is stunning i'm keeping it i really like it though it is painful to store because it's like an odd shape i've talked about this before from bombshell cosmetica i have these two parts and i'm not really sure what to do with them they've actually just recently discontinued them and are releasing new parts my original videos on these got quite a bit of views and i mean for me i think it's taken me a long time to improve on youtube to where I am now and I know I've still got a long way to go but <sighs> I have these palettes not sure I didn't really the dark colors were nice and the shimmers are really nice but the light mattes are terrible so I'm curious to maybe try their new releases that come through but I'm not sure and I feel like I should get rid of these palettes I don't know, part of me just wants to keep them. So I'm going to put this in my maybe declutter pile and just sit on it for a while. Maybe I should start a series going through of like, will I say goodbye? And playing with an eyeshadow palette one more time. Because we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight palettes in my maybe declutter pile. From PG Queen, I have Kush Queen. This is one of my first like palettes, I don't know, like indie brand palette was really beautiful like it was nice but like the shipping took a really long time i did order swatch stickers to come with it and they never came i emailed customer service they said they were coming they never came i gave up so i know a lot of people do like her instagram because she re reposts a lot of people has a lot of followers and i do remember like loving like white rhino like look at that i'm running out of hand like squirts on my hand but it's a beautiful shimmer. So I don't know. I'm keen to keep it for memories. But I don't recommend them for the customer service. From Natasha Denona. I've got the Sunrise palette. I recently bought this when they had the sale at Sephora. It's 15% off. I've been wanting to try some Natasha Denona without paying like the huge amount of when it's like the $200 for a palette. So I think I really want to give this palette like a good working with before I look at buying the Metropolis palette, which is like the next one that's sort of like one of the palettes that's on my radar. From Kaleidos, we have pretty much all of their eyeshadows. So I have the initial Futurism collection here, which is Cyber Bronze, Astro Pink, Sapphire Green. And then I've also got Electro Turquoise and VR Neon. Looks like these will be coming up soon. I've done like, I've played with the VR Neon, once, VR Neon once now and I've really liked it and I'm excited to play with it one more time. But I've been quite a fan. Electro Turquoise is probably my least favourite 
of these shadows just because the shimmer formula is the most difficult to work with and you need glitter primer see if I can get it to like check the packaging does feel really nice and substantial Marceline I'm still here the packaging on these is quite unique and somewhat substantial so they feel like higher quality but my like one of my favorites is definitely astro pink and sci-fi green so I don't know I think you can't go wrong with four out of the five I'm just not sold on this one but if any of the color stories in the other palettes appeal to you and you haven't like bought them I think really go for it because they are just beautiful though I do need to still play with VR neon a little bit more from Urban Decay I have a naked heat uh, I bought this remember seeing like all the hype about it at the time everyone making videos on it and uh, now I wonder why people were so hyped because it's just not very unique or um, anything but I do really love the packaging so and like if I'm really looking for like a burnt red look I know the palette to pull out I've also got Naked Smoky which I believe is now discontinued but it's such a just easy to go to black and grey smoky palette but I've kept it and I have had fun playing with it at times and I do just love this style of packaging that they've pulled out another palette I have from them is the Urban Decay Born to Run I bought this overseas I've never seen it in Australia but this is just a simple sort of travel palette that I've taken and I really like the idea of this switchback shade it looks really pretty and I've liked it when I've used it my apologies, my cat has taken particular interest in this box the longer it's been set up. I've got the Melt Radioactive palette. I do need to edit my looks that I did up with this, but I have a lot of fun with it and I really love it. And I cannot wait for the next collection. I'm super excited for it. From Certify, I actually do have this one. This is the Tropical Wonders palette. I've never used this on my palette. Like never used it <sighs> I bought it when I was on special and then I realized it was like a matte palette and I just don't really have much need for matte rainbows I like it to have some shimmers so I've never used it so it's a good challenge for me to actually use it I'm gonna put it there from NARS I have the Sarah Moon palette this is a really old limited edition palette that my sister-in-law bought me and solely for sentimental reasons I've kept this brown boring palette. From Bare Minerals I have the Gen Nude Floral Utopia palette. This is another palette I pull out for work looks or for a simple just bronzy look. I really love it. I haven't really, I'm not sure where it went. I bought it online at Mecca and I've never seen it in store or anywhere. But I really like it for what it is. From MAC I have two of their palettes. I remember buying these from the US because they were so much cheaper. Mac have just recently brought their prices down in Australia, which is pretty exciting. I really need to go and check out, check them out in store and see what they're doing. But I played around with these parts a bit and I remember getting one of my first makeup lessons. I went into Mac and got it done there and she used Mischief Minx on me and I loved it. So I now own these two. Um, I like them as, to have them in my collection. And yes, I have a problem and I keep all the inserts. But I don't know if I would like... I'm going to keep them because I like them. But they're not palettes I would like be rushing out to buy. Oh, I just put another color palette. So this is Blue Moon. I did three looks on palette with this. And for the first time in my life, I got sick of blues. But it's a beautiful palette. It's really nice. From Jeffree Star I have the Beauty Killer palette. I've done a few videos with it. I don't mind it but I feel like his brand has become so elevated since this. Like even if you take a look at, I've got Jawbreaker here. Like the improvement in packaging is substantial. The improvement in colour choices is substantial. It's just, yeah. I think I could bring myself to let go of the old palette but it's kind of nice to have it in my collection and I just would feel bad like giving it to anyone because it's so expired now 
Uh, Jawbreaker is definitely one of my favourite palettes because it has all of the colours in the Camel D Pastel Goth that I haven't really been able to find anywhere else. And it just works beautifully every time for what I want. If, if I don't know what colour I want to wear that day, I open this one and I see where my day leads me. There is now a cat joining us. I, I hope you don't mind seeing her. I'm just going to... I can't be bothered telling her off. Let's see where she's going. There we are. Um, so this is Marceline. She's my cat. She's a rag doll. And yes, she does have a lion cut. My vet recommended it. Here, let me show you. Marceline, come over here. Come here, girl. So... Yeah, the noise. So I just was I ran another one of the ColourPop ones. So this is the ColourPop Aha uh -huh Honey palette. <laughs> I'm just gonna. Look. Um, my apologies, is muscling purring really loud. It used to have glitter in the middle, and one day I just got really mad at the fact there was a glitter, so I got rid of it. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do about it yet, but yeah, I did that. From Sugar Pill, I recently bought their little mini palette, the mini color palette, and <sighs> look, I remember seeing the look that uh, Nett did with this palette and it looked really lovely, but once again I think it just being all mattes has really put me off, so I haven't played with it, but it's definitely on my list to play with soon. From Jeffree Star, I do have the mini breaker palette, uh, here, uh, I've never actually used it. And I need to. So I'm going to add this to my eyeshadow palettes I need to play with. I just noticed another Kat Von D. So this is the Kat Von D Metal Matte. Wow. I'd forgotten that this was like a boring palette. The problem with Kat Von D palettes is that I can't even sell them on Facebook. I've tried. No one's interested. So I end up giving them away to my family and friends. And... They end up, like, you know, they really love Kat Von D and then it makes people use Kat Von D more. So it's almost easier to just hold on to Kat Von D products so people don't enjoy the formula. She has changed the formula from, like, what it was then to what it is now because this is pre, I believe, the, like, Cordy Free. There is a formula change and they're not as good anymore. From Dubious Place, we have the Magic Mini. Views it a bit, I really like it. Dubious Place just doesn't disappoint with shadows, really. The Douche palette. A beautiful colour story, which I found really intimidating initially and have grown to really love. Zulu, this is like a classic in any colour lover story. And the festival. This one. Oh, yeah. And then recently to my Dubious Place collection, I've added the Tribe palette. Uh, Chef Jonathan lent me hers and I fell in love with it. I'll link her down below. And it's just beautiful. I also picked up the Warrior 3. Which is just like a stunning colour story. And I am excited to play with this. So it's going on the path. For my birthday, I think, I got this Tartlet Tease palette. This is a really just nice, easy, a neutral wearing day kind of palette to have. It's simple, easy. No fuss. When I was in Berlin, I bought some Art Deco singles and they came in this cool case. I 100% need to play with this. From Tarte, I have the Make Believe in Yourself part. This is like in my, I feel like I've said a few of my first purchases, but this is one of my, I remember buying from Tarte and buying a whole heap of stuff. And the Make Believe in Yourself palette was in that collection. I just remember being so excited when buying it. I've been using it a bit lately and the shimmers in it are really beautiful. Stunning Myth, which is our like matte here, is really lovely to work with. I'm actually quite a fan of this one. From Lancome, we have the Hypnos 21 Bastille palette, which I'm planning to depot at some point. Uh, Charlotte Tilbury, the Dolce Vita palette. I have this from, I believe it was my Beautylish Lucky Bag. And, um,. I don't really like it, but I'm going to keep it just so I don't get tempted to buy more Charlotte Tilbury. As ironic as that sounds, have me something that I own and be able to pull it out and be like, well, they kind of all look like that. 
can stop me from buying stuff. So let's have a look through my Huda Beauty. My Huda Beauty eyeshadow palettes. I have a few of the range. And definitely when they first came out, I was so obsessed. So we've got Gemstone Obsessions, Moab Obsessions. I know my sister is really into neutral makeup and I bought her Moab Obsessions and I think she said it was too much, like too much pigment, which is such a funny concept for me. Then I've got Coral, I've got the Neon Orange palette, which I'm not the biggest fan of because of those shimmers. They're just not the best performing. Sapphire and Electric Obsessions. Electric Obsessions is always going to be like an ultimate classic favourite of mine. It's just such a beautiful eyeshadow collection of shades and I love how it's like a really curated sampling. You can really get a bit of a bang from that one. Mauve I find is a very nice basic part to sort of play with. Gemstones I haven't played with enough. But it is some beautiful shimmers in there and I like just having it there. Coral Obsessions is a really nice easy palette but I probably could have either Coral or Moab and be quite happy. I don't mind this palette. I love blue. It's one of my favourite colours so I've kept it. And I've kept this because I don't mind the mattes in it. They aren't too bad. And Electric Obsessions I think is like one of my first like really colourful palettes that I really loved. So it's always going to stay around. From Strobe Cosmetics, or now Stroud Cosmetics. And can they please get around to sending out their new palette? I feel like I've been waiting so long. I know they said they had got manufacturing issues or something, but it would just be nice. <sighs> I wish they'd send that out in email sometimes, instead of just e updating on the Instagram, because I go on the Instagram all the time and I'm like, when are they sending the Arcana palette? I've been waiting for it for so long. Anyway, I've got Creepy Cute and Divinity. I've done a fair bit with Creepy Cute. This is a palette that a lot of people told me that I needed to have. And I agree. I did need it. Divinity I bought because it was on special and it's been quite nice. It's not a bad complimentary palette to sort of have it laying around. From Pat McGrath, I've got the La Vienne Rose palette. And it's nice. I don't know if I would ever... I remember getting it in 20% off sale and I don't know if I'd ever really recommend it to anyone but if I'm trying to impress anyone I'll pull this one out. I'm waiting for another one of her parts to really catch my imagination and I might pick it up then. So I've got the Too Faced Gingerbread Spice which is their part from last year and I feel like this is what this palette, the palette they released this year should have been the palette they released last year and this should have been the palette they replaced re replaced with extra spicy because I really love this palette it's a very easy to use this shade sucks frostbite me but everything else in this palette is beautiful and it's just like a fun neutral mix to have in your collection whenever I look at the new one I'm like mm, such a disappointment oh and I forgot these are my sugar peel singles that I have Using them a bit, but not enough to like have a fully formed opinion on sugar pill. From Ciate, I have the Astro Lights palette. I remember just being absolutely astounded by this palette, the Ciate Astro Lights palette, when it first came out. I couldn't stop staring at it. I really loved it. Now I own it. I've used it a few times, but like it, nothing special. From Ciate, my favorite palette that I've sort of owned is the Pretty Fun and Fearless, which is the Chloe Morello collab that they did. But this is just like such a fun, cool tone mix of eyeshadows. And I really hope that Chloe Morelli comes out with some more collabs because she does create some really fun combos to play with and I love watching her content, obviously. I would like to play with this a little bit more and see if I want to get rid of it or what I want to do, but it's not high on my list to play with because I just know I do like it. I'm probably going to keep it. From Be Perfect, this is a newish one that I is high on my priorities to like film up some looks with, but this is the Makeup Jar Makeup Artist. Palette is she's an Australian makeup artist that has a really cool Instagram that I've been following for a long time. She came out with this palette, and really so far, every time I've used this palette, I've been blown away. It's stunning, the shimmers are amazing. I'll just like show you minx. Like it's beautiful. And date night. 
I don't know if that even shows like how amazing they are. Let me swallow my fingers. But they have looked stunning on my yeah here that's better. They have looked stunning on my eyes when I've worn them. The mattes have blended really beautifully, and I love some of the name shades in here. Like you got Dirty Tan, Kiwi Hard, Warrior, Cloudy. I don't know what Ash Peach Out. Just like some fun terms. They're pretty cool. So. I'm excited to do a, a three looks one palette with this soon and get that cracking. From Glitty Cosmetics, I have this palette. I filmed one look with it and I just hate it. <sighs> I don't know, I tried to use like every shade in the palette before I was going on holiday a while ago, if you remember, I'll link the video. Um, don't feel like you have to watch it though. But I remember it being okay nothing too particularly impressive and I don't know they're a UK brand but these are all glitters I didn't realize that when I bought it and um, was disappointed upon finding out because that then for me means that really only these two rows are usable from blush tribe I've got the Paulina palette I've done a few videos on this palette and it's just beautiful it's a fantastic color story if you can get your hands on it if you don't have it already you definitely and love color this is a great place to start and Paulina is a great influencer I love her channel it's just all round good things from Norvina collection with ABH I've got the Norvina 2 I've had this for a little while and I've played with it a little bit definitely not enough to have a full formed opinion I don't think the shimmers are that amazing but the mattes everything I've used so far has been really good but I'm definitely going to film up a couple looks with this soon for a video. From Morphe, ages ago I bought the Morphe Pride palette. The Artistry palette. I don't know what call them. And I was actually quite impressed with it. It's quite a good colour range to have. It is limited edition so you can't buy it anymore. So I don't really know what to do anymore with the limited edition stuff. I definitely probably are not going to buy that much limited edition in the future. I've got the Urban Decay Full Spectrum palette. My sister bought this for me when I first got into makeup. And it's okay. It's not the best, but it is a fun one to pull out sometimes. And for sentimental reasons, it's stay. And we get down to my last three. So I have the Blush Tribe Minaza palette. I've used this a couple of times. I've never really been super into it. But I definitely need to use it a bit more to fully form my opinions. But I think... Is this palette still available? I'm not sure. I've got the Moonspell Luna Beauty palette. This is, I bought this pretty much because there's one shade that's called Prue, which is my name. And I was so excited. I love the whole theming behind it. Just stunning. I've loved the mattes in it. And the shimmers haven't been that amazing. But I'm tempted to go back and use them again with some glitter glue and see how I feel about them then. And I am just, I love this packaging. It's, oh, it's beautiful. From BH Cosmetics, I have the Sylvia Garni collection, and I'm such a stan. I actually have one that's like signed by her. Can we finish on this? But I don't know. I've always wanted to film a lot of looks with this palette, but I've I just don't. I've used it a lot traveling, and it's beautiful for that. It's affordable, so it's really great. But I definitely need to play with it a bit more. <laughs> and um, just get some good use out of it. Anyway, that pretty much like, let's just finish up on this one. That leads us to the end. I'm sorry, I'm not sure how many palettes I have just shown you, but it's quite a lot. I'm going to count them through as I put them away, and it will be in the description bar and probably the title of this video. Let me know what you think of the palettes you've seen and the palettes that went in the pile of eyeshadows that I'm going to play with a bit more before I decide about getting rid of them. Eyeshadows that I'm going to do a few more looks with, film them up for you guys, and just play around with my makeup a bit more. So let me know what you think about my collection. I would love to hear all of your thoughts, even if it is just to tell me that I have a makeup addiction or I'm like addicted to buying eyeshadow, because there's definitely some truth there. And that's where I've been really intimidated at the thought of filming this video, because I haven't wanted to confront just like how many of the palettes I haven't used. 
And so I really want to focus in on using those palettes and not buying more things. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and um, I hope it was like, you know, interesting. Anyway, bye bye. <laughs>